Yes. Okay. This is this is this is perfect. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, today today's speaker, Angelka Hedrich from Belgrade, from Serbia, from Serbian Academy of Sciences. A beautiful place. I enjoyed visiting uh, this place and also Angelka for some conference. So Angelka will. Uh, present us today a very also a very interesting topic which we did not in fact uh, listen uh, yet in our seminar so Angelka if you can explain us maybe like quietly and slowly what it is about okay. it will be it will be very useful for us and the title is oscillatory model of methodic spin uh, spindle please Angelka you can begin yeah very Thank yeah you. very welcome uh, thank you. I would like, like uh, first of all, all to thank uh, Professor Vital Olpert for uh, calling me and giving me the opportunity. Yes. Excuse to... me. There is a microphone. Something like yes, that. yes. There is some problem with sound because there is an echo. And uh, is it possible that you you have two microphones, maybe in computer, and your headphone? Uh, is on because there is some echo and a little bit difficult to listen to you. Uh, if I do this, uh, maybe it's better. Yes, 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 yes. Can you see now? Yes, it's OK. It's OK. There were two uh, versions of uh, Teams. Yeah. So that's why was the echo. OK, I would like to first to thank you to Professor Vitali Vorti for inviting me to, to give a talk on your seminar. And it will be a pleasure for me to uh, say something about the auditory model of mitotic spin. But first of all, uh, I will talk, I will say what is the mitotic spindle, what are the, its parts, uh, what it serves, what it, it is for. Uh, and then I will um, say something about uh, uh, other uh, models of uh, mitotic spindle that exist in the literature, not all of them because there are a lot of them. And then I talk about uh, some details of the oscillatory model of mitotic spindle. Uh, the resonance as a potential mechanism for sister chromatic separation and uh, analysis of the energy of um, oscillatory motions of the sister chromatids in, in the mitotic spindle. And uh, uh, I will finish with the proposal of the improvements of this model, uh, which consider the cytoplasm as a viscous fluid. Okay, so. Uh, what are the mitotic spindle? Uh, in every cell of our body, which has a nucleus, uh, it has the, the, the uh, possibility to divide, and uh, the machinery that enables that kind of the, the divisions uh, is called mitotic spindle. And here uh, there are some representations of the parts of the mitotic spindle. For example, this is the uh, very nice image uh, of uh, one of the part of the cell cycle, which is called metaphase. And these blue uh, elements on the fluorescent microscopy are actually chromosomes, the genetic material. These green are microtubules. Uh, the complex protein structures that catches the, each uh, chromosome. And uh, here it can be visible this dot, the green one are centrosomes. They are organizing microtubules in a specific manner that and pull uh, microtubules with the chromosomes to divide, to separate the, the chromosomes. And uh, okay, the spindle size uh, correlates with the size of the cell and it is adjustable to the shape and size of the cell. And here, as I will, as 
Professor Volker said slowly, what is the mitotic spindle? So in each cell, we have genetic material uh, in the nucleus and the, the DNA, and it will spiralize and condense in the forms like this, which are called chromosomes. And they are visible only during the cell division process. And in that condensed form, it is considered that it is not possible to, let's say, uh, to read the DNA, but not the all genes. Some genes which are required for the uh, mitotic spindle and for the cell division, they will be active during this process. So this cell cycle, the division cycle, is uh, divide. I mean, biolog biologists and uh, doctors are divided in, into different phases during, uh, uh, according to the events. Uh, how chromosomes are moving, moving and what are uh, what is going to happen with the nucleus, with the DNA, uh, with the cell membrane, and so on. So the first phase, it is interphase. And uh, in that phase, uh, still uh, the nucleus, the, 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 the chromosomes are spiralized. And the second is prophase. In, in that phase, um, chromosomes are starting to be visible in the nucleus, but the membrane of the nucleus still exists. And this stuff, this, let's say, circles are representing the centrosome, which will, it is the organelle, as I said, and it will divide and go to the opposite pole uh, from another one so that it can organize the microtubules. And here, from at the phase again, uh, so, the point is that the chromosomes during the cell division cycle move in this cytoplasm and sometimes they um, are positioning on a specific manner, which means that uh, in some, let's say, 60 to 80 percentage, uh, each chromosome is going to align with the, with the specific one. For example, I'm a friend of Vitali, and we are going together on the conferences, and we are always going together on the conferences. And that is some kind uh, with, with the chromosomes also. Uh, in the metaphase, it is called the metaphase plate. The chromosomes are arranged in the center of the cell. Uh, the centrosomes are opposite. And uh, after uh, in this phase, they, they, they have to be synchronized so that the movements in the next phase also have to be synchronized. And this phase is called anaphase one. So uh, genetic material in this phase is uh, doubled. And this, it has to be separated into sister cells so that uh, uh, each sister cell will have uh, the same quantity of genetic material. So in this telophase, uh, the cytoplasm then will divide. So um, the point is that they move through uh, the cytoplasm, which can be considered as a viscous fluid. Uh, sometimes this is con uh, included into the mathematical models of the uh, mitotic spindle, sometimes not. And uh, also there are, uh, since this is the very complex uh, system, and there are a lot of molecules that are involved in, in these uh, events. Uh, for example, we will show, I will show in the next slides that the centrosome itself is a structure which is very complex. And the microtubules are also the compl uh, complex protein structures. Itself, it has a specific dynamics during uh, the mitosis. And uh, how, the centrosomes are orientated that will affect the orientation and polarity of the mitotic spindle. And why is this polarity important? It is important in biology because that polarity um, determines in some way uh, the differentiation process of the cell. And also it can be very important if cell line is going to, let's say, some um, wrong direction, so to go to become a cancer cell. So that polarity is very important in embryogenesis. And um, as I said, um, here in this, uh, uh, this is the chromosome. 
and it has to be considered as a cylindrical form. And the two, uh, these are chromatids, these structures, and it is actually the DNA and the proteins fold up. And uh, the kinetochus, this part, um, is connected with the microtubules from each part. And here they are connected with the chromatin structure in between. And these here, it will be the, they will separate during the anaphase of the uh, cell division cycle. Here is the example of a um, uh, concept of the uh, chromosome territories. So as I said, some chromosomes align with each other in uh, the prometaphase and the interphase, uh, but there is also evidence of, of that in the metaphase uh, part of the cell division cycle, there is also the, uh, that kind of um, pattern of uh, getting aligned with, with uh, specific chromosomes. So here you can see again uh, that metaphase and anaphase. And what is also important uh, this event is synchronized, but the movements of um, uh, the chromosomes, um, the speed they move towards the poles is not the same for each chromosome. So they have some kind of dynamic, and that dynamic is not uh, is nonlinear. And also the oscillations of the centrosomes it seems to be the nonlinear. Uh, as I said, chromosome territories and all these concepts of the chromosome territories and the specific arrangement of chromosomes during the cell division cycle is called functional uh, genomic uh, architecture. Yeah, it's a different from the separation times for different chromosomes. And there is also um, um, a different, uh, there is a change of these patterns uh, as the cell ages. Uh, and here we can see the centrosomes, these red dots on the cell wall, how they look like, like a cylindrical structures uh, with a specific um, triplet of microtubules arrangement. Uh, they are arranged uh, perpendicular and they are serve as a microtubule organizing center during mitosis. And here is uh, some uh, curve from uh, uh, the literature, how the oscillation patterns of these structures change during the uh, mitosis. Um, okay, in the literature, I uh, found the different types of uh, mathematical models of mitotic spindle. Uh, they deal with the different uh, aspects of mitosis. So some deal with uh, how the spindle elongates or uh, how the chromosomes are uh, spindle, uh, the assembly uh, process of the chromosome, uh, from, uh, chromosomes, then uh, the, uh, how the kinetochus are positioned, how the checkpoints are, the dynamics of the checkpoints and uh, the mitotic spindle length. And there is one very, for me, very interesting model, uh, which deals with the electroacoustic behavior of mitotic spindle, because uh, I didn't mention, but the microtubules are actually dipoles. They have positive and negative charge and positive and negative, um, what's the side of, of um, these structures. So uh, there is no integrated model of the mitotic spindle, which, uh, uh, deals with the whole structure uh, 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 and through the whole phases because the behavior of uh, the mitotic spindle is different in different phases. So some models can cover one part, some maybe two parts and so on. And uh, this is the, one of the oldest models. Uh, it's a force balance model uh, and they deal how the microtubules uh, the dynamics of the microtubules and their attachment to the, to the uh, chromosomes. So on one part, they elongate to catch the chromosome. Uh, and uh, in the anaphase, when they have to retract uh, to the uh, centrosomes, to the other pole, uh, the point is to, it doesn't actually happened like a retraction, but these structures actually dissemble. 
And that's how uh, are they pull the, the chromosomes to the, um, the centrosome some part. And uh, 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 the point is uh, that uh, the force have to be balanced according to this model between the uh, chromosomes, which are in the sister chromatids, they are connected, the microtubule and the centrosome, and the centrosome itself to the uh, cell membrane. And uh, the concept is that the microtubules uh, are sliding actually uh, one to each other. This is uh, how it's better uh, on, in this uh, picture. So this is one example, for example, one uh, chromosome, sister chromatids, interconnection of chromatin, and this is the central part of microtubules, and these are um, uh, peripheral microtubules, which are connected to the cell membrane. So they have to be the balance of these forces according to this model. And what is also interesting information is that the search and capture models actually deal with how uh, um, to calculate the time, how the microtubules have to find the exact, because they are organized here, and how they have to find the exact chromosome which they have to catch and to organize in the metaphase plate. Uh, this is agent-based model. I think this is a recent paper in 2023. Uh, but they also deal how uh, the microtubules are uh, attached to the chromosomes for each side or just um, symmetrically or uh, asymmetrically or when they're attached just on one side. And how this uh, is um, when the volume uh, of the uh, chromosome arrangement is preserved and when, when it's not preserved and when is, is it preserved. So um, there are different aspects how to study the same uh, the, uh, the same structure from different points of view. Uh, this is also from the same paper when they uh, uh, they can calculate uh, how um, um, the spindle change to the uh, for the different cell size and for the different cell shape. I didn't show this photo, but uh, well, when it's uh, longer, medium, and for the small cells. So the cell size, uh, the spindle size will adapt to the cell size. Um, and it's always happened. So, uh, and the positioning of the chromosomes in the metaphase plate will be in the middle, in the middle of the cell. Uh, also, the experimental evidence that the cell size modulates the oscillation and the positioning and the length of the metotic spindle. Uh, in this model, they deal with the uh, orientation of the metotic spindle. So according to the Z axis, so this inclination can be different. And according to this inclination, uh, cell can uh, it will affect the differentiation process and how the cell will communicate to uh, each other and in what cell line they will proceed each, uh, their development. So uh, depending on the orientation, we can, uh, we can observe this um, uh, uh, rotation points. Uh, and this is also a completely different approach in uh, modeling of the metotic spindle. So they consider that uh, the uh, microtubules are the dipoles and uh, their electrical charge and oscillations can affect uh, the electromagnetic field. Uh, and they uh, use a different, uh, let's say, um, set up uh, for their uh, model. So uh, they have um, the pulse, they expose, they, they check how when the model will behave if they have the pulsed excitation of the metotic uh, spindle or uh, 
this is how this um, shown. So we have, and if the spindle ends are fixed, uh, and if uh, the oscillations are done, this is that case. So this is how it shows um, these dots are actually the chromosomes when you see them, uh, for example, in a petri dish. So in the in the two dimensions, uh, not in a, in a, in a 3D. Uh, but also they have the variations. It's a little bit different uh, pictures and different behavior. Uh, if um, it is um, undamped and if uh, the ends are free and if uh, they use the random excitation pulse. So um, in that case, these uh, chromosomes, it's like more, um, not so separate, but they are more concentrated on the, on the central uh, part of the cell. And it's not so, you can't differentiate it so well about the dipoles in, 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 the, uh, in the model. And of course, in that case, if it's not done, then the oscillations are uh, with the same amplitudes. But it is also important because uh, this model, why I choose it, because uh, uh, in a real system, it is not just the mechanical oscillations. We have also the electrical oscillations. And as I will show in the oscillatory model, we try to, uh, let's say, uh, estimate or uh, to, to, to model um, the change of the energy of the moving chromosomes, how they, how the pattern will change according to the different parameters. So uh, now the, the oscillatory model of uh, mitotic spindle, and in this model we can just say shortly the basic concept of the model, and then uh, how we um, let's say calculate the amplitude frequency curves, uh, what are the conditions for resonance and conditions for dynamical absorption, and why it's this important for the biological aspects, uh, and yeah, how we calculate. Uh, uh, the energy of the moving chromosomes and the improved model uh, when, when we uh, assume that the chromosomes are moving in the viscous fluid with a low Reynolds number, and then we use the rain, uh, uh, real function or energy dissipation to uh, describe uh, the energy of the system of moving chromosomes. Okay, so this should uh, uh, represent the centrosomes. And if they have a different color, that means that they will have the different frequency of oscillations. And if they have the same color, that really means that they have the same frequency of oscillation. Um, chromosomes are denoted with a blue and red. And uh, red in the next slides will denote that these are the chromosomes with heavy masses and the blue with the light one. And so we play with the changing the uh, position of the chromosomes in the mitotic spindle because we do not know still what, uh, not the facts, but uh, what is the algorithm, how the chromosomes are arranged and uh, how this can possibly affect uh, the physiology of the cell. So. What is the basic concept of uh, biomechanical oscillatory model of mitotic spindle? Uh, the concept is based on the theory of oscillations, uh, and the spindle is considered as a system of coupled oscillators. So um, each oscillator consists of uh, one chromosome, uh, which is um, considered as a system of with the word uh, uh, coupled masses. So this uh, point mass is interconnected with the spring, which denotes the chromatin fiber of the, um, that interconnects the sister chromatids. And uh, this um, uh, element is uh, uh, like a massless uh, elastic or viscoelastic uh, spring and that which denotes uh, the uh, microtubule. 
and uh, here are, uh, are the centrosomes, which are uh, considered as um, uh, genomic centers of oscillations with a certain mass. Uh, and um, all of the chromosomes and sister chromatids are actually connected through the renomic centers of oscillations. And this is how it looks like uh, through the uh, fluorescent microscopy. So centrosomes, uh, chromosomes, and the green are microtubules. Uh, okay, so this is how it's um, uh, in a system. It is actually one sister. Uh, one pair and the, another pair of the chromosomes. So what is also important, uh, this, um, let's say, symmetry line and uh, the angle uh, uh, which uh, each microtubule connected to the certain chromosome uh, um, makes with, um, with the uh, symmetry that uh, interconnects the two genomic center of oscillations. So, um, uh, okay, and uh, we can approximate for the first model that uh, the heavier chromosomes are in the central part uh, of the metopic spindle. And we will see how this affects the amplitudes of the oscillations when the, the central, uh, with the heavier chromosomes are uh, uh, outside on the periphery of the metopic spindle in the metaphase plate. Uh, okay, yeah, and uh, that alpha is relatively constant. Um, and um, okay, for the first model, it's not in the viscous fluid, so we, it's like it's uh, in vacuum for the first uh, simplified model. Uh, also, yeah, the angles are equal. The model is symmetric according to the, um, the, the, the metaphase plate, and uh, each uh, actually chromosome has a, a velocity which has two components the, the relative and transfer velocity, and transfer velocity with the uh, linear and collinear component. Okay, so these are uh, um, the uh, expressions of the square of the velocity uh, of the um, upper and uh, down uh, chromosomes. And uh, uh, so this is the uh, relative and the component of transfer linear and collinear uh, component of the velocity. And this is the uh, uh, approximate value of the elongation of the standard light element that interconnects uh, the, the uh, sister chromatids, actually it corresponds to the chromatin fiber. And here uh, is uh, the system of fractional order differential equations obtained by uh, extended Lagrange differential equation uh, for the uh, upper and down chromosome. Uh, and uh, these are the pairs of coupled fractional order differential equations uh, which can be solved independently uh, and uh, for upper and uh, for each pair of the uh, of each oscillator, each pair of the chromosomes. And the, uh, these are the definitions of each of these. So uh, uh, what will be important? It will be important the rigidity of the uh, chromatid fiber, the mass of the chromosome, and uh, uh, here it will be important, that this is this, uh, the rigidity of the chromatin fiber and the um, mass of the chromosome, each chromosomes, and the rigidity of the microtubules, which um, uh, have to be taken from the literature, from the experiments, and uh, specifically for the phase, for the metaphase, uh, uh, because uh, the microtubules are also very let's say fragile structures, they are not so stable, they change their dynamics uh, during the uh, cell division process and um, that, that should be taken into account uh, uh, when we do the numerical uh, calculations. So uh, these are the proposed particular solutions. 
for the modified or the differential equations, modified in the, the clear quantity first to linearize them and then um, find the, the, the solutions. So uh, these solutions um, are then uh, put into the, uh, to the equation, then we can obtain uh, um, the system of, of algebraic uh, um, nonlinear homogeneous equation that we then further can solve uh, as uh, 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 according to the unknown entities. Uh, and this is the, um, uh, uh, the expression for the determinant of the system of that nonlinear equations. I think that I have a slide for them. So uh, the determinant to use the Cranmer law and to solve that, we need uh, this condition that that's, uh, uh, the determinant of the system is different from zero. Okay, this is the conditions for the resonance and these are the conditions for the dynamical absorption. Uh, why the condition of the resonance is important from the biological point of view? Uh, uh, it is important because um, uh, we postulate that that resonance could be one of the mechanisms from the biomechanical uh, point of view uh, for the separation of the sister chromatids in anaphase. And dynamical absorption can be very useful to um, explain why sometimes some uh, chromosomes are, let's say, stand still in the metaphase plate and some uh, are moving. Okay, and these are uh, expressions how we calculate uh, the, the amplitudes. And uh, when, yeah, this critical uh, elongation of the uh, chromatid fiber that interconnects the uh, sister chromatids, then it will break, and then, uh, then we have. Uh, the separation in one phase. So uh, this was I want to explain. And yeah, the numerical calculations. Here is the slide uh, where put uh, all the numerical data that was uh, taken from the literature uh, for calculating the um, rigidity for the um, uh, microtubules and the rigidity for the uh, chromatin fiber and uh, uh, but in the metaphase plate and also the masses of the chromosomes that can be taken from this uh, this um, reference and uh, for the results I'm going to show it is the, uh, when or the mitotic angle is considered that is uh, the angle is a p half and uh, each um, the, the, the arrangement of the chromosomes in metaphase plate is um, let's say they are equally uh, distributed uh, uh, and uh, the, the angles are uh, equal for each chromosome. So, and uh, the, the angle is calculated uh, from the central uh, axis that interconnects through uh, two centrosomes. And uh, these are data how we calculate uh, the frequency of the oscillating uh, centrosomes and that uh, we use actually two different uh, values um, uh, in, in our numerical experiments. So um, yeah, the angle, the centrosome amplitude, the mass of the centrosome is approximated as a mass of the mitochondria because they were not adequate data in the literature, but um, that doesn't affect actually, uh, let's say, the global data on the, the, the pattern of the results. Um, yeah, amplitude frequency curves uh, for the first pair of the, uh, yeah, I didn't say uh, that uh, for the numerical calculation we use, uh, the chromosomes are from a mysis uh, and they have 20 chromosomes, uh, uh, so um, that's why this will be um, actually the 20 curves. Um, okay, and uh, in this, this is the first pair of the chromosome, the frequency graphs. Uh, 
in the case when the heavier chromosomes are in the central part of the metallic spindle. And this is for the first 10 chromosomes, but um, what we should um, uh, orientate on this right part of, of the, the slide because it has, uh, let's say, not just biological meaning, but also the biomechanical meaning because uh, the frequency could not be, don't, don't have a negative values. And from this, we can see there are actually the two resonant values. Um, first is very uh, similar for each of them. And the second depends uh, of the uh, chromosome and its masses. Uh, as the mass uh, uh, increases, uh, the frequency will decrease. So these are also how it looks like when we separate this. Uh, and these are the first part and the conclusions. And um, in this, our first, uh, uh, um, let's say, investigation and study, uh, uh, we uh, find out that the mass arrangement, uh, the, the arrangement of the chromosomes and their masses will affect the oscillatory movement. And um, uh, I didn't show here, but if the heavier chromosomes are in the central part of the mitotic spindle, the amplitudes of oscillations are lower. Uh, and this is maybe uh, the minimum of energy consumption, which uh, is the principle of all, let's say, uh, engineering designs, I mean, even in the cell, but we still don't know, and we need experimental proof that this is really happening in, in, um, in the real system. Also, this model, if we change the, uh, if we consider that the microtubules are the elements with the viscoelastic properties, uh, then the, our model can be useful for uh, investigating the aging process uh, of the metotic spindle and behavior of the uh, chromosomes during the aging, the process when cell ages. Uh, and the next will be kinetic and potential energy analysis. So um, we use the same concept uh, and the kinetic energy uh, is the sum uh, for, for um, the separate um, oscillator uh, includes uh, the energy of the upper chromosome and the lower chromosome and the energy of um, uh, let's say upper uh, uh, renomic center and lower, so one and another renomic center, and the potential energy for each oscillator is calculated as a sum of the uh, potential energy of the uh, renomic centers and uh, uh, the uh, not the renomic centers, the, the sister chromatids and uh, uh, the element that interconnects uh, the chromatid fiber to sister chromatids. So the total will be some of those two. Uh, and uh, um, here are the numerical results regarding the um, first uh, 10 chromosomes in the case when the uh, chromosomes with the heavier masses are in the central part of the metallic spindle for the case when the uh, Ronomic centers oscillate with a different uh, frequency. So uh, we can see that uh, it is um, the amplitude is changing along uh, the time and uh, for the different um, position of each chromosome. So, but the pattern is the same, let's say. Uh, and uh, this is the case uh, when. Uh, uh, the frequency of the ergonomic centers are the same. So the frequency will, according to our model, will also affect uh, the energy, here is the kinetic energy shown, uh, of the, but it will affect also the potential and the total sum uh, with the um, uh, remark that uh, uh, potential energy, according to our model, it's much uh, more contributes to the total energy of the uh, each um, oscillator than the kinetic energy. 
So the proportion, it's very small for kinetic energy uh, compared to the potential one. Uh, and uh, here is the case um, uh, when, when, when we can put it, um, uh, when we change uh, uh, the mass distribution. So uh, for the same, for the same, and for the uh, different, uh, um, uh, also the retrofusion of the centrosomes, and compare with these, uh, these amplitudes are much, uh, I mean, much. They are significantly higher than in the case when uh, we concentrate the heavier uh, the chromosomes in the central part of uh, the metal expander. So uh, this is also um, uh, the case when we, we, we play with the, with the change uh, the frequency of uh, metallic uh, of, of uh, the centrosomes. So how will change how the amplitude of uh, kinetic kinetic and potential energy will change uh, according to the uh, frequency of the genomic centers for the one function in the central part. And this is uh, for the one uh, kinetic potential and the total energy uh, when the frequency are unequal and uh, when you change it to different, uh, use different, different values. So you can see the pattern is the same when we, uh, the same in a way uh, that it undulates, uh, increases and decreases uh, for the case when the centrosomes have different also three frequencies and uh, when you um, uh, um, reduce the frequency, then you the, the amplitude is also, you know, the amplitudes are then, then higher. And the second conclusion uh, regarding the um, uh, the energy uh, and um, the frequency of the centrosomes, so they also affect. We showed to our model that they also affect the energy of the uh, and the pattern of the change in the energy uh, uh, during the uh, oscillations. Uh, but um, the meaning, the biological meaning, is actually. Um, Regarding the cell differentiation process, and what is we didn't take this still uh, to make the spe special temporal energy map of oscillating chromosomes, so that we can see um, is there some kind of a pattern, and that if this pattern can serve as an epigenetic code. Uh, students, it up. Okay, I will finish in, in ten minutes, I think. And uh, um, we improved the model in a way because it was, you know, okay, it's, it's ideal uh, conditions. The chromosomes don't uh, have uh, any kind of uh, resistance uh, during their motion to the cytoplasm. It is not real. So uh, then we have to consider that the cytoplasm is some kind of viscous fluid uh, with a low, low Reynolds number. And uh, in that case, um, it was uh, a challenge to uh, find the the Raymond to calculate the Raymond number uh, because it is um, in the rheology, um, it, it is different when the structure has a cylindrical shape and when it has a, a, a spherical shape, how will the fluid will behave? And um, our colleague, my colleague from the uh, mechanical effect, uh, faculty of mechanical engineering University of Nish, Yasmina Bogdanovic Ivanovic, uh, which is um, the specialist for fluid mechanics, helped me uh, in this uh, calculation. So the force, uh, the resistant force will have this form. And then uh, how we calculate uh, the uh, micro G. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, dynamic viscosity. This is the length of the cylinder. And this is the uh, velocity of the chromosomes. And this is the epsilon and uh, the Euler constant and uh, uh, 
uh, the lining on for the chromosome, uh, uh, the sister chromatin will have this form, uh, where this is the row is the um, um, the density of the cytoplasm, but in a way that we it can be approximate if it is it is a water uh, diameter of the sister chromatid length in the metaphase and uh, the speed uh, they are taken from the literature uh, from the from the experiments and uh, this is the value that was calculated according to this uh, numerical data uh, fluid resistant force for sister chromatid for upper and lower chromosome and uh, energy uh, kinetic potential uh, expression for potential energy uh, and for the kinetic one and uh, this is the real function for energy dissipation uh, which has uh, this uh, relation with uh, the for kinetic and potential energy, and the system depends as a non conservative system. And this is the uh, full uh, expression of this um, energy of dissipation. And um, then uh, uh, the equations for the oscillator behavior system from it in this case. So uh, we will actually have uh, this micro added uh, in the system here. Uh, which will then affect uh, the, uh, the amplitudes of the many chromosomes. And here are the supposed particular solutions, which can have to be added in the previous equations. And then we have a system on, of, non, uh, of eight non homogeneous organic equations, which uh, then can be further uh, solved with, uh, using the Cromwell's law. So the principle is also the same. Uh, with the that difference that uh, we have uh, doubled the, 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 the number of equations and then we complicate uh, um, a numerical procedure. Uh, this is, uh, let's say, the analogous when we have different circular frequencies and uh, um, uh, in the case uh, for the anaphase, so uh, in that case, uh, 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 each oscillator is actually oscillated with one end and one degree of freedom, and uh, uh, here are the uh, amplitudes for particular solution in that case for the anaphase, and in, uh, uh, um, this uh, the last uh, uh, presented model, uh, which uh, considers uh, cytoplasm as a viscous fluid with a low Reynolds number. Uh, it is possible uh, to um, uh, let's go further uh, with the improvements of the model, and uh, uh, we can propose that the chromosomes, according to this model, there can it is possible that they move in the cytoplasm uh, to the mechanism of oscillations of relaxation. And it is in accordance with the um, uh, experimental results uh, when we can measure it, um, uh, mark the chromosomes and then um, visualize their um, oscillating mechanism to track their, their movements. And uh, it is possible that the fluid um, changes its um, consistency in a way, its change state from salt gel transition during the mitosis, uh, but, uh, uh, and that transition could be with a different speed. But this concept, uh, it's, let's say, something like a proposal for, for another uh, improvement of, of the model. And uh, yeah, uh, the main question, OK, nice things, but uh, is, do you validate the model? <laughs> we don't validate the model, so it's still theoretical. Uh, and but the validation, according to my opinion, could be done um, using the quantitative scanning frequent focal microscopy, which we uh, don't have in Serbia. There is something, but it's not used in this in, at the Institute of Physics in Belgrade. But uh, it was not used in these purposes. They uh, only, uh, uh, let's say. Um, track and measure the positions and the concentration of the single molecules. 
in the cytoplasm. And if uh, we can apply this methodology uh, to track uh, the specific chromosome and to measure its emission of the fluorescence, which is not necessarily um, uh, the measure of the energy of movement, uh, then it is possible to, let's say, prove that uh, the model is working and that uh, is why we, uh, and that energy could serve as a potential uh, physical parameter that could be measured in uh, the, the future in the microscopy with the specific microscopy methods. And um, what is the idea that that uh, energy that we can measure and the uh, future energy maps that we are going to be possible and we hope that we could uh, create can serve as a diagnostic procedure to uh, distinguish between normal cell and pre-cancer cell. So before uh, it is transformed to the cancer cell, which uh, uh, have a very, uh, let's say, clear uh, morphological uh, differences and, and, and uh, differences in uh, a cell division process to, uh, that is visible to the microscopy uh, uh, compared to the normal cell. Here are some references. Maybe it will be interesting to, uh, to some of you to, to check. They consider very different uh, models and consider uh, that uh, references with, from which we uh, took the numerical uh, data. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention and to thank uh, my co colleagues, uh, the co authors, Professor Katya Stefanovic Kefri from the Mathematical Institute Sano, and uh, Professor Esmina Bogdanovic. Jovanovic from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering from the University of Nish. And uh, if you have any questions regarding the model or uh, suggestions for, for improvements or for collaboration, I will be very glad to, to listen. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Angelka, for this interesting and instructive presentation. We learned a lot uh, and we have some time for discussion and for questions. Um, and I would like to begin uh, this discussion with some questions about the about the mechanism uh, of oscillations. Because maybe you explained that, and I missed that, but uh, 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 because you mentioned in this uh, context the centrosome, uh, is these oscillations come from from centrosomes, or what is the mechanism of oscillations? Uh, okay, um, in, in the cell. So, what what is uh, what we know from the uh, experiment from the experiments? Uh, we know that the centrosomes they oscillate. What governs their oscillations? We do not know. We know that the chromosomes also oscillate, but they are interconnect. Why they are interconnect with the microtubules and the centrosomes. And that oscillations can uh, uh, be detected through the microscopy. And uh, but uh, and that it is have nonlinear uh, behavior, uh, uh, let's say pattern of that oscillation. But what governs the oscillations, we do not know. In our model, we uh, propose that the autonomic center of oscillations that are centrosomes because they organize microtubules and microtubules then catch the chromosomes and they then pull it uh, uh, towards uh, uh, the poles. Uh, each centrosome will, let's say, uh, collect uh, their set of chromosomes. But um, there are many molecules that are involved uh, in the position of centrosomes and uh, their um, division and so on. But what are the, the, the physical uh, law under this behavior? We do not know still. Yes, but uh, in the model, you okay. assume in the model you assume that these are centrosomes which impose oscillations, yes. right? 
Yes. yes. Okay. In the, our model, we, we suppose that, that the centrism governs the, the oscillations. Right. I understand that. So, uh, but from the biological point of view, what is the uh, what is the meaning? What is the uh, objective of the, of this oscillation? What what is their role, better to say, in the mitotic spindle? I suppose that these uh, these are not just occasional oscillations; that they play some no, some no. important role. Yes. Um, 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 well, uh, um, when they have the, the, the depth oscillations, is somehow that's why we um, that uh, uh, we're talking about the resonance and the uh, dynamical absorption of the of the oscillations because uh, until the all chromosomes are not positioned uh, in a metaphase plate like this. Uh, the next phase will not occur. So they can oscillate um, around this, uh, let's say, equilibrium position. But if they are not attached very well to the uh, chroma, uh, to the sister chromatid, nothing will happen the second phase. And um, if the attachment is not so stable, uh, then it is possible that one chromosome is be attached and doesn't go to the right direction and goes to the, uh, for example, the whole chromosome then go, uh, 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 the, uh, the whole chromosome will go to the same centrosome. And we will have in this cell the duplication of that genes on the chromosome. So uh, uh, this, this is called um, numerical um, uh, abnormal phase of the chromosome, uh, uh, numerical mutations. So you will have, for example, uh, in a Down syndrome, uh, uh, the people who have Down syndrome, they have the problems because they have three chromosomes number 21 instead of two, and they causes problems. So um, this uh, unequal separation and maybe um, differences in elasticity of the microtubules on one side can uh, explain why uh, uh, that numerical uh, um, abnormalities uh, happened in the cell from the biomechanical point of view. So this means that uh, two chromos during this mitosis, two chromosomes move in the same in the same cell, right? In the same daughter cell or what? Yes, which is yeah, not okay. good. Yeah, which is not well, which, which, which is, is not, yes. Yeah. Yes, I understand. But still, I return to my uh, to my uh, previous question about the role of oscillations because uh, because you explained that uh, for well uh, for some special frequencies of oscillations there is a resonance and this resonance uh, is it necessary to separate this. Uh, mitotic spindle and two daughter cells, or residence yeah. is a byproduct which is not desirable. So, so the separation uh, the separation works through residence through resonance, right? Uh, that's what we uh, propose. Yeah. But okay. As we know, the re uh, 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 the resonance. I mean, if we have uh, the equipment to measure uh, the oscillating uh, frequency of the chromosomes. Then we can say, okay, you are, uh, we, we, our assumption is correct. So the resonance occur when the resonance occurs uh, for uh, the structure of uh, chromatid fiber that interconnects to sister chromatids. Uh, this is the mechanism. Mm -hmm. but maybe it's not, you know, uh, uh, resonance in in most uh, engineering system is not desirable uh, event. Well, but uh, okay, yes then. Uh, if you're well, at least what I understand your hypothesis is that it's really a resonance which is necessary to to separate. Then we can understand the role of oscillations. So oscillations lead to resonance. The resonance leads to separation. Well, it, there is at least some well some understanding of this mechanism. Otherwise, if this is not the case, why do we need these oscillations? Ha! Uh, well, uh, oscillations actually. Uh, it, explain the movement of the chromosomes. So it is one of the way, the one of the approach, let me see, uh, 
it's maybe not so big. Uh, one of the approach uh, that we consider that the microtubule is a structure that can be considered as a, uh, as a spring with a certain uh, rigidity and so on. And that spring moves the chromosome towards the centrosome. In other models, it is not considered like a spring, but they, they, they deal how the structure is dissembled and assembled. So it, it is just a different approach. So maybe mechanistic, but um, uh, it is based on the um, experiments when you can see uh, in uh, um, stages of the cell division cycle that the chromosomes, uh, that their movements actually are not, uh, uh, let's say, with one speed and in the same position. When they start, they end. No, they, yeah. they start, they go back and forward, back and forward until they come to the, the final destination to the pole. That's yeah. why we, uh, that's why we, we, we uh, uh, think about the oscillatory model of mitotic changes. Yes, I understand. I understand that. But uh, according to your model and to your hypothesis that oscillations and resonance are necessary for mitotic spindle and cell separation, uh, but you showed in your results that this um, resonance occurs for different for different frequencies uh, uh, in for different chrom chromosomes. Uh, so how how then? Do they have really different frequencies uh, when they oscillate, uh, or how then it works if they need different frequencies for the, for resonance and separation? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly this one. So, do they oscillate? I mean, you have like 20 chromosomes in your experiments. Do they oscillate all of them with the same frequency or with different frequencies? They oscillate with different frequencies. Uh, excuse me. With the different. With different, with the different frequencies, but uh, the, the, uh, each, but the um, because of this very small, uh, the angle is not so so big. You know that that is what, according to the model, uh, um, determines uh, the the behavior of the oscillating behavior. So that angle is actually, let's say, the most important because the mass. Of the chromosome, each chromosome, they are very. Um, it, the difference between masses is very small. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so it's not the big difference, but uh, uh, according to the model. Uh, uh, also, what is, um, let's say, uh, the model is uh, uh, somehow confirms the experimental data that the chromosomes do not move with the same speed towards the poles. Mm -hmm. So the speeds could be uh, uh, maybe slightly different, but they are different for some, you know, because, um, I don't know, in, in the humans we have 24, but the X chromosome, for example, compared with the Y one, uh, it's mo almost double. So it's much heavier. Mm -hmm. So it will move slowly. But the point is at the time of the division cycle ends that they all go uh, uh, separate equally to the two sister cells. Right, but so, in your... So, yes, what? Uh, no. And as, as we obtain such a results, that the frequencies uh, are different and energies are different. Uh, and uh, 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 what we... Uh, want to propose that these differences at the beginning uh, of the cell division uh, is somehow important what will cell become later. So uh, uh, the, the, the data that will be transferred to the next cell. So it could be some kind of epigenetic coding, that arrangement, that frequencies, that alignments to each other, because they have the differences. It is like, uh, let's say, maybe it's, uh, let's say, banal analogy, uh, in a way that you have one room, and then you have, I don't know, 
three or four pieces of the furniture in that room and you can arrange it differently. That will be the different uh, impression of the room each time. And if you get, if you have a, a um, infrared camera and record each of uh, 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 the uh, arrangement of your furniture in your room, then you will have um, uh, a different uh, heat map, right? So this is the point when we put that on the cellular level. Yeah. But it is for, for another for future research. <laughs> I mean, right. it's not so easy to find uh, such kind of equipment that uh, we can we can measure that. Uh, um, again, back to these frequencies in your figure, which you mm -hmm. show now, and you will also explain that, that uh, there are different uh, resonant frequency. One, one resonance frequency is the same for all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for all for ten, that in the center. For, yeah, the there is some noise. Well, uh, one frequency is the same for all chromosomes, and another resonance frequency is different. But you say that it's different frequencies, right? That that are realized because how how you choose between these two different uh, because excuse me, for each chromosome you you have two resonance mm -hmm. frequencies. How uh, you choose between these two? So, I mean, not you, but of course, but chromosome. How the chromosome chooses, chooses. Yeah. Is that uh, that is in a resonance? Yeah. Is, is it kind of stability, instability, or how it works? It it could be, it could be, stable. That one is maybe stable, and it is another is unstable. But we didn't um, uh, do the uh, analysis regarding the stability of the of the mechanism. Yeah, but what you observe okay. numerically is that they are different, right? It's another one yes. which works. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. There are models in the literature which deal with the stability of the mitotic spindle, specifically mm -hmm. the stability of the microtubules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is all that in detail is uh, mm -hmm. very, very interesting, and also from the point of view of dynamical systems, because. You have many coupled oscillations, oscillators, mm -hmm. like, like for example, 20 of them, which yes. are connected, which are connected through the centrosome, but you don't observe synchronization, right? Because if you say that they oscillate with different frequencies, there is no synchronization of these oscillators. Um, I can't answer. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, 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 because um, there possibly that there is a synchronization, uh, but the pattern of oscillating uh, uh, of the this these are the energies; they are not the frequencies. Yeah. So. Uh, well, anyway, if you cannot if you so, cannot answer so, now, maybe it's an interesting question to think about. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, because of course, of course, when we have coupled oscillators, not always they are synchronized. But the question mm -hmm. of the synchronization is somehow, uh, well, might be might be expected if the coupling is strong. Well, what we have in, in many different examples in, of different mm -hmm. like uh, nature of oscillations. But the the idea is always that if coupling is strong, then we can expect synchronization. If coupling is weak, then there is no necessarily uh, synchronization. But if you have many, many oscillators which are not synchronized or weakly, better to say, no, if they are completely unsynchronized, they have independent oscillations. But here, maybe if you have weak synchronization, it can be a very complex, even chaotic oscillations of this weakly coupled oscillators. So it's really an interesting question, I think, to um, explore uh, yeah, it, to explore it, it, in yes. your model. Yes, yeah. uh, thank you, thank you for the remark, because we were focused on the energy. But since that um, displacements are um, uh, incorporated in the um, uh, equation of the energy, uh, and uh, as we obtain such kind of of, uh, of the energy curves. It is possible that, according to this model, it is synchronized. 
<laughs> then the question is about about frequencies because in some in, synchron, in synchronization frequencies should be they are not necessarily the same they but they they might be uh, somehow related to each other like a, in natural ratio or or rational lump or something like that so I think it might be interesting to to compare. Yeah, the relation, the relation between different different frequencies, things like that, and and also related to this question because the last the last model you showed with viscous fluid, and I have a, if you are not yet very tired, I have a couple of more questions, uh, and uh, one of them about this last model with viscous fluid, so. Uh, uh, so, uh, you, as far as I understand, you don't have this fluid explicitly in the model. So, so uh, uh, chro chromosomes don't. So you have influence from from the fluid on chromosomes through viscosity terms or from, through the damping terms, but not influence from chromosomes on the fluid. No, you don't have explicitly fluid in the model, like. I don't know, Navistock's equations or whatever uh, equations no. of the fluid, you don't have it. No, no, we have no. that that the resistance force yeah. that yeah. fluid makes will dump the oscillation. Yeah, but you don't have fluid as a like surrounding medium, right? Because uh, because another way, another way of coupling yes. of this oscillators is through the fluid. You understand what I mean? Yes. Yes, because yes. fluid, fluid, some, some, hard some, to find some. Yes, understand. Uh, so that we'll then use the Navier's Stokes equation, and it was a very complex. Uh, of course, yes. We don't have uh, uh, the, the let's say uh, anything in the literature how uh, this fluid will uh, goes around the cylindrical shape like this. That was uh, the problem. Yes, I of course I understand that. No. Uh, in the, in this case, in this case, uh, of course it becomes and such much a small, uh, such a small uh, element. You know that was yeah. the problem. Well, of course there are of, of course there are many numerical methods to study that. In particular, immersed boundary method, different particle methods like like uh, mm, dissipative particle dynamics, uh, smooth particle dynamics, things like that. Uh, but it's it becomes much more complex. Like for example, in models of blood flow, when you have like blood cells in the flow, this is what people do. Uh, so you have fluid, it's plasma, and you have cells. Yeah, the blood cells is around. It's approximate as around. So as a, as yeah. a, uh, not as a cylinder. That, that's uh, that makes yeah. the difference in, in uh, yes. calculation. Uh, but the, my point is that uh, in uh, that fluid uh, can also synchronize synchronize oscillations of uh, these uh, chromosomes, and maybe maybe you can add in your model without introducing explicitly fluid. Maybe you can add an additional synchronization term, like you would have a fluid, and you have kind of. Uh, uh, force exchange or uh, maybe not uh, not force but uh, position position like for for each chromosome you will have an additional like spring viscoelastic spring model in your fluid if you understand what I mean uh, like that they will exchange information about their positions okay a anyway. I understand that it might be a little bit already too far from what you do, and uh, uh, I have also some uh, some questions about the solution which you showed because, uh, truly speaking, uh, I said probably I missed something because uh, you showed this model and then some uh, uh, some formulas for solutions. But uh, uh, could you please show the 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 model, the very first one, probably the simplest. Uh, I did not have time really to uh, to to understand. Yeah. This is the real function of this. Yeah. For you have you have differential differential equations. And then. Yeah. yeah this one. Yeah. This one. So so what is that? It's uh, no. Please return to the ah. This equation. Sorry. 
So what is that? It's just linear equations with forced uh, with forced terms. So what is that? It's linear equations, right? Here, they are linear, actually. Uh -huh. yeah. So we, we put these proposed solutions with unknown amplitudes in this one, in uh -huh. each of these ones. Yeah. And then, again, obtain the, the system of nonlinear algebraic equation, which have to be solved through the use of the Kramer's law and so on. Uh -huh. But we didn't, uh, I have to, to admit, we didn't do the numerical analysis for this. <laughs> you no. know, this is just analytical because, uh, yeah. as I use math, uh, math lab, it's, it's yeah, not I so see. convenient. It's, it's, yeah. it's um, time consuming and you have to take care of the indexes. And yeah, this will be the next step. So to see uh, uh, how this model will differ from uh, uh, the results uh, according to the energy we, we obtained uh, uh, when we did not take into account the, the, the viscous fluid. Yeah. Uh, also, you showed some slide that you mentioned fractional fractional derivatives. This is like, uh, could you please show that? Uh, it was some, somewhere close. What? Let me see. It is somewhere not far from this one. Um, no. Yeah, so, yes, uh, yeah, you have already fractional derivative here in this slide. Yeah, um, but uh, the, uh, it was also uh, the model with um, analytical solutions. Uh, yeah. The fractional derivative uh, was introduced. Um, uh, with the reason that uh, microtubules can change their elastic properties as cell age ages, so uh, that you can then uh, um, count with the viscoelastic properties or viscous properties of the microtubules and to adapt to the model according so, to that. So, so again, to make sure that I understand, you use fractional derivative to describe uh, viscoelastic properties of of these oscillators, or or what? Yes, of, about uh, the element of the oscillator. The the element, yes. The element, the microtubule, it could be uh, considered as a pure elastic spring. Yeah. That moves uh, the from the sister chromosomes towards the pole. Or yeah. if it ages, and then we can uh, count that it is uh, it has vis uh, viscous properties or the viscoelastic properties. In that way, that uh, um, fractional derivative is introduced into the equation. Yeah. Uh, well, I ask this question because uh, because well, there are some other questions from the audience, so I will finish very very rap rapidly with my with my question with my comment because. You know, there are many, many works on fractional derivatives in all possible fields of science, and all the time I'm trying to understand how these models are obtained, derived. So in your case, is it, a, is it possible to get kind of justification or derivation of this fractional derivative, or it is completely phenomenological? Say, saying that usually the people say, okay, there's kind of memory, and we de yeah, yeah, describe yeah. this yeah. memory with fractional yeah. derivatives. I know what they are yeah. um, At this moment, uh, uh, you can just say it's fundamentally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, at this moment, you can just, uh, there is uh, the evidence that the whole division uh, of the old cell will last longer. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the divide, dividing time for cell to divide uh, after, for some cells, you know, it's normal cell, it's not cancer cell, it's not uh, genetically modified cell. So after 40, I don't know, 20 divisions, that 20 division will last longer than the first one. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's not just the anaphase and metaphase. So it, yeah, it's, at this stage, it's fundamentally so it is possible to to implement into the model. But uh, as a behavior of the system, it is discussionable, as you said. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for this uh, detailed answers and discussion. We have some other questions from the audience. Ja Jana, please. Jana Lansova, you can ask your question. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can you clarify whether the model takes into account the possible occurrence of errors in the mitosis sequence? For example, uh, mitosis errors under the influence of mutagens and how these errors are detected and prevented? Complex, uh, complex it's, question. Uh, yes, um, it's a complex question because um, uh, the mutagens, we didn't uh, take into account that uh, uh, you can apply the mutagens to our model and to see what is going to happen. But if you vary, for example, uh, uh, the, the uh, rigidity of each uh, microtubule in the model of this oscillator, then you have different rigidities and then you will have different separation times and um, uh, in that way um, you can talk about uh, what you just said so the accuracy uh, of, of the mutagenes and, and, and the, the, the how can you explain this for example, uh, when you mentioned this, uh, the difference between cancer cells and normal cells, uh, what is what is this difference in the properties of these oscillators? Uh, in the properties of oscillators, um, uh, uh, will be that also the rigidity, but not just of the microtubules, but also of the uh, chromatin fiber. The, the spring that interconnects sister chromatids will be different. And in, in the cancer cells, you have the possibility that, that you have three, four, six neuronomic centers of oscillations. So the, uh, the complete um, uh, geometry of the mitotic spindle could be different. And that's another, that's a challenge to model using this model. Okay, I see so, that. So the geometry of the of the system will be different, and the, the the rigidity of the parameters in the model will be different, because uh, 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 cancer cells are um, less stiff than the normal cells, mm -hmm. and they are not adjust to the, the surface in the petri dish as much as the normal cells, and uh, also they are. Regulation of their cycle is um, not controllable in that way. Uh, uh, as our colleague said, uh, the parameters of, of, of controlling the, the whole mitotic spindle process in, in uh, mutagenes is another let's say, complex area. So uh, you can add, for example, um, uh, chemicals that can break the microtubules and you have stopped the division process. Even it is possible through the laser beam to cut a single microtubule that is connected with a specific uh, chromosome. <coughs> so uh, fundamentally model can explain some parts but not all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it seems to me that there are no other questions from the audience. I would like to thank you again for this uh, interesting presentation and this uh, also very interesting discussion. Thank you again. Thanks to all our listeners. We finish our today's seminar. Uh, have a good day. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you and thank you for the opportunity.